So today I want to talk about uh, Messier 109, so definitely one of the high numbered ones, and it's a barred spiral galaxy again. This is what it looks like. It's pretty beautiful. So most people call this the theta galaxy because it kind of looks like a theta, you know, a Greek symbol that like we use in maths all the time. So, you know, kind of a 60 symbols crossover in a way, the theta galaxy. And it's in the constellation of Ursa Major, which most people might know by different names. So the Great Bear, the Big Dipper, in the UK, we call it the Plow. And the whole constellation is Ursa Major. The Plow is obviously the bit that's sort of brighter there in that image. And M109 is just underneath that star there. So if you have binoculars, you might be able to see something a little bit fuzzy if you go out and find it. Also, while you're there, I don't know if most people know, but this star in the plow is actually a double star. And if you get binoculars, you can see that, which is kind of cool. So just while we were in the plow, I thought maybe I'd throw that in. <laughs> so the reason that M109 is kind of special is because it has something that's called an answer bar. Here's the spiral arms of the galaxy around the outside. You've got that central bulge there, but you've also got this bar running through the middle. And then at the ends of that bar, you'll see there's sort of two concentrations there. Almost makes it look a little bit like a racing car steering wheel. The ones in the, with the outside kind of looks like that. So these are all examples of galaxies with bars. So on this side, you've got the main galaxy image. And then here, they've sort of edited it a bit so that you only see the sort of brightest features. And you can see that these little concentrations at the end of the bar pop up in each case, that one really looks like a racing car steering wheel. And then this one, you can even see that you've got the little blobs here, but then you've got this sort of weird X bar, one of these peanut bars that Mike talked about a couple of months ago, which I think are really interesting as well. So I've got a, a kind of a cool book this week. Yeah. The De Vocalo Atlas of Galaxies. This is actually a really, really famous book. It basically details most of the NGC galaxies that we see in the sky. So this M109 is NGC 3992, so really deep sky objects. What they also do is give a really nice introduction in the book to how galaxies are classified. Hubble was one of the first people to actually try and do this, Edwin Hubble, back in sort of like the 1920s. And he came up with the really classic tuning fork diagram. You can see that we've got all our spiral galaxies on this side of this sort of tuning fork, and then you've got all of the round elliptical sort of blobbish galaxies on this side of the tuning fork. And the idea is that you also have two strands, one of which is barred spiral galaxies and one of which is out barred. So M109 is definitely down on this track. And then you end up with things that kind of look like they're spiral shaped or like a disc, but they don't actually have any spiral structure in there. They're sort of just sort of flat and featureless. So they're kind of on their way to becoming these like round blobbish things. And we call these galaxies on this side early type galaxies and the galaxies on the right hand side of the tuning fork late type galaxies. In the late types, the spirals, you have lots of complex structure. And in the early types, the ellipticals, you have really sort of like you know, boring, just blobbish, you know, very featureless structure. Now what we know is that actually evolution goes from sort of this side of the diagram where you collapse and form a disk of stars and then you move to this side of the diagram as you evolve and galaxies merge. And so this book also gives you lots of nice examples of barred galaxies as well. See, there's a couple. And so this shows you the sort of evolution of galaxies along that diagram as well. So you go from the things with the most complexes of structures where the spiral arms are very loose and everything is sort of very flocculent, we call it, like very sort of fluffy, to going to more tightly wound spiral arms, getting tighter and tighter until you end up with galaxies like this up here where they're almost at that stage where there's no spiral structure left. And they're sort of at this sort of early type spiral phase, they call it. All through this atlas, you'll find galaxies that it says, oh yeah, there's an ANSE in this one, or there isn't one in this one, etc. But nobody really knows why they're there, how they form, what relation they have to the bar itself since they're at the end of the bar. So it's a little bit of a puzzle. 2007, there was then this paper, which was a statistical study of ANSE in barred galaxies. Basically, they went through that atlas of galaxies that de Vocola put together, and they basically counted how many ANSE were found in the certain types of barred galaxies. So they've got lots of nice pretty pictures of more ANSE in here, but they've also got this little figure here. So this is a histogram of the percentage of barred galaxies that have have ANSE for the different types along that tuning fork diagram. So they start down here with sort of the SA galaxies. Those are the ones that had the very tightly wound spiral arms. And then they go all the way out to the SC and SD galaxies that were very loose spiral arms that you can see basically the earlier the type of spiral galaxy you are, the more likely you are to have an ANSE and it drops off so that as soon as you get end up with like loose wound spiral arms, you're not gonna have one of these ANSE features. Except the M109, is an SC galaxy. 
So it's one of these ones with quite loose spiral arms. If we look back at the image again, you can see that there's lots of complex structure in there. They're quite loose wound. So they're sort of not one of these early type structures. It's definitely one of these late type spirals. So this is one of the rare ones. So this paper also looked for like statistical correlation with rings. So we see lots of ring galaxies before we talked about that on this channel, because uh, they're tend to be correlated with bars, but actually there was no correlation with the ring. Because if you think about the ANSE, it's almost kind of like it's a part of a section of the ring in a way, like you've lost the sort of tops and the bottom bit. But actually they found that there was no correlation with like bars and rings and bars with ANSEs in this paper. It took until actually earlier this year for a simulation paper to really come out actually studying what was going on in, in these ANSE. So I've got that paper too. This one, Building the Peanut. Great title. You know, in simulations, how do you get these structures in galaxies with bars? They might not have pretty pictures of actual space, but they've got pretty pictures of simulations. I mean, they're not as cool, but they're still pretty cool. <laughs> these are the images of the simulations that they've made, and so they're at different times. So they start from T of zero over here, and they end up 10 billion years later, and these are at the different snapshots in that simulation. And so they're saying that the answer basically doesn't form on the bar for a very long time. So like four to 10 gig years, very precise. And what they actually found in this paper was that there is this very strong connection to these peanut bars, these peanut bulges. So Mike talked about this where if you have a bar structure in a galaxy, you have instabilities in that disk, which are gonna cause that bar to sort of flop around and break. And what that causes is that you end up spreading the stars out and you end up getting a kind of an X structure as it flops around and that can tend to look like a sort of a peanut in a shell and so what they found is that that's actually very tightly linked to the answer as well so that answer to form one of those things you also need not just one of these instabilities but you need two of them to occur and obviously they're things that happen over very very long time scales which is why you kind of have to wait around so long for one of these things and it's that spreading out at the end of the instabilities that they think is what's causing the answer see them face on. So when you see them age on, you see these peanut structures. When you look at face on galaxies, you quite often see these bar-like structures. And they're just an instability that if you just have a disk of stars all orbiting around initially on circular orbits, they tend to rearrange themselves in this way to create these bars in the middle. 